Welcome back to episode two of Straight Facts. It's going to be an explosive show tonight. I'm sure we're delving into the Arteta situation at Arsenal Football Club. Should he stay? Should he go? How long has he got left? Cristiano Ronaldo back at Carrington today, training with his Manchester United team has got the juices flowing to a point where the mainstream media is asking for the 3 p.m. Saturday blackout of football coverage to be scrapped for one week only so the entire country can see the return of Cristiano Ronaldo. It shows how big this is. We're going to be talking Conte. We're going to be talking Chelsea. Title favourites as well, all on tonight's show. And I'm joined back by popular demand on the football terrace. Lee Gunner is here with me now. Welcome back to the show. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. I've got the shades on because I'm trying to see the visions, Harry. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I broke my glasses as well. Look how bent they are. Oh, bro, I, bro, I, what I happened? Sat on them. I'm fuming. <laughs> oh, man, I've done that before. You need to get to bend that back into place. Uh, my kid, my daughter broke my a nice pair of Ray-Bans and Freya was pulling them off my face a few weeks back and she held them in her hand and then she just did that. She just bent them oh, out and that was mate. it. And she's 33, you can't do, say too much, mate. But how, how is life in Spain right now? Mate, I've got my aircon on. It's absolutely sweating. It's like 31 degrees at the minute, but the humidity is about 87%, man. It is proper sweating today. And do you know what's funny? is like every time it hits September, like all of a sudden the mosquitoes disappear and the flies turn up. Yeah. It's just flies everywhere. It's like, mate, I, I went and sat by the pool and it's just like I'm getting attacked by flies. And there was loads of hornets and that. And I made the size of the sting on these hornets. I was like, nah, mate. <laughs> I'm literally sitting there with like repellent all around me. So yeah, I'll probably stink of uh, bug repellent right now. But yeah, it's all good, man. Loving it, if I'm honest. It's um, this country's a bit of me because I just go in go slow mode. I'm late for everything, like literally everything. Like the only thing I'm not late for is an aeroplane or a train. Other than that, I'm just in go slow mode. And and Spain's kind of like that. It's just relaxed. So yeah, yeah. I'm enjoying it, man. I, and I hear that, mate. And I see like I've watched a few of your vlogs and I've seen a few of your Insta posts, and it's like in the sea, whatever. And I'm just like. It's a living the life, mate, and you've got to do it. And, and why not? With the job that you do on YouTube, you can theoretically take it anywhere in the world. Why not live somewhere that's warmer, nicer, cleaner, sunnier than, I don't know, Milton Keynes or Luton or London, wherever it is you, <laughs> you are putting up? Why not, mate? Why, why not go and do that? I'm seeing a lot of rat emojis. Come in the on, the rats are in the chat. <laughs> rats are everywhere. Loving that. Make sure you've all smashed that. Let's get this past 1,000 likes today, ladies and gentlemen. Give it a smash. Lots to talk about. Lots to speak about it in relation to, to football going on as well. And I have to start with Arteta because, you know, you were somebody from, I mean, me and you had a lot of private conversations, but I asked you, you know, you, you, we'll talk about these phone calls now where I was like, are you really this Arteta route? Is this, is this, <laughs> is this for Arteta? I asked you straight up. I remember calling yeah, you. you, did. you, did. Do you That's what I like you? about me and you though, Terry, is we're just so blunt with each other. We're just like, right, I'm going to ask you this and you're going to give me the answer. And that's how we are. And Go on, sorry, mate, I cut you off. No, no, it's good. So, like, it was only after that that I was like, damn, this guy legitimately, 100%. It wasn't like you laughed went, yeah, it's a bit of an agenda. I'm playing on it, getting some T-shirts done. It was, no, this guy isn't good enough for Arsenal. It now feels like the majority of Gooners agree with you to a point where I saw one YouTuber, no one associated to the terrorist before anyone starts throwing names in here, who literally <laughs> said he was also against Arteta but he didn't want to side with Lee Gunner. He didn't want to be associated with Lee Gunner in any way. So he backed Lee Gunner, uh, he backed Arteta publicly just so that he wouldn't be in anywhere near your opinion. Like, how, how does it feel now seeing the majority of Arsenal fans turn their back on Arteta? Um, and second part of the question is, how much longer do you think he's got in the job? Uh, in answer to the first part, um, it's kind of sad, really, actually, if I'm honest, because like I, I obviously put my, my head above the parapet three weeks before he got the job, we obviously knew he was getting it. And um, I 100% wanted to be wrong. Yeah, like, because obviously I, I've supported Arsenal nearly 40 years, Terry. Yeah, it's like, I actually wanted to be wrong because if I was wrong, then I can take the heat either way, good or bad, whatever, yeah? But if I'm wrong, then obviously Arsenal were doing well. When we won the FA Cup, I was in Sevilla. I went to see uh, a friend of mine and his girlfriend's and stayed in an Airbnb, did the stream and then, like, but I went back and looked at the comments and normally after a watch along ends and you know this, you've done watch alongs, mm. you very rarely get many playback views because people are not going to sit there and watch a three hour stream, mate. Yeah. And if they do, they'll watch maybe 10 minutes of it and they'll just see the in the chat where the goal reactions are and they'll go and just watch that and bounce. Yeah. 
I think I've had about 28,000 views playback on that. Yeah. And the comments like, he's proved you wrong, this and that. And I could have very easily swerved and turned when we won that FA Cup. But like, I just look at certain things. And the reason I, I didn't want him is because number one, he weren't qualified to do the job. Number two, he's very arrogant. And I knew that anyway. And you're coming into a dressing room at, then with a Bamiyang, um, Ozil, you know, big men, like big hype, like players that have got a big following globally. Yeah. And then, you know, you're coming into that dressing room and now you're going to try and tell them how to do this and that. How, how can Arteta ever tell Ozil what to do? And I don't rate Ozil that highly. Yeah. As, as everyone knows, but how are you going to tell Mesut Ozil how to play football? <laughs> like, Come on. Yeah. It was never going to work. Right. So, so yeah, it's, it's kind of weird now. And like what you just said about somebody um, deliberately backing them just so they didn't agree with me. Like, mate, there's thousands of people like that. Like, and I kind of get it in a way because I like people say, oh, you go about it the wrong way, but you make good points. The reason I, like, I'm just passionate about my club. Like, and I don't know who that YouTuber is, by the way. It's, I don't really care. But like, people that subscribe to me see that I just talk from the heart. Yeah, I'll swear, yeah. I'll be rude. Yeah, I cuss some players, I cuss the manager. You know, I, I get... um you know, I get Bertie with it and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I just want my football club to win. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and listen to this crap. I've listened to it for 17 years, Terry, like about we moved here to, to compete and this and that. Well, now it's another three year project, to, uh, project youth. It's like, no, no, yeah. no, no, do what's required. So it's kind of funny seeing everyone swerve. But at the same time, it just means that we're doing crap. Do you know what I mean? And um, yeah. in answer to the second part of the question, how long do I think he's got? I don't know. Like I see Edu do his interview the other day, and I I went mental, mate. Like no target set publicly means no accountability, you know. Yeah. And and then we've seen Vinay come out a couple of days before that and ask for unity. Well, listen, I don't care if it's a project. The project shouldn't be based around one manager. Yeah, it should be a club project that's yeah. continuous, like Chelsea. And people always say to me, "Why do you compare Arsenal to Chelsea?" Well, we've spent more than them. Yeah. They they got an owner coming in Abramovich about the same time we moved to the Emirates, roughly. Yeah, and um, and people just bang it on our owner all the time. We've got the eighth most expensive squad in in the world right now. Yeah, it's more expensive than Bayern Munich, Barcelona, etc. Yeah, we've got the highest net spend in Europe in the last four seasons out of any other team. We've got the highest gross spend in the last two seasons. Yeah, and when people say we can't compete, what a load of rubbish. We can compete. Chelsea are self-sufficient. They have been for six seasons. We've outspent them for six years. Yeah, total. Like, and it just makes me laugh. Excuse, excuse. And like when I see our, our hierarchy come out and ask for unity and then sit there, no targets. They went down a project you've set up this, this summer because they decided that if we went and did 150 on Madison, um, Aaron's, Basuma, I don't know, Matt Ryan on a free, Anana for six mil, Pusima Wa. All of a sudden, the expectations go up, and now we have to get top four, which means when he's sitting 12th for Christmas, they can't, they have to sack him. Whereas yeah. if you go with a youth project, you can dress it all up, and the majority of people will then sit there and go, Oh, well, we give it time then, because they genuinely do not want to sack him. They didn't, they, they got rid of Emery at the first attempt because they wanted yeah. him originally. So I don't, I don't know. That's a hard question because if we lose to Norwich, Burnley, and Tottenham, mate, we're bottom of the table six losses. But then if we go and spank Norwich or even just beat Norwich, beat Burnley and beat Tottenham, all of a sudden we're probably sat sixth. So I don't know. But six ain't good enough for me. I want to win a title. And people are saying you demand too much. Well, sorry, Hector Bellerin. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, well, I want to well, win. Yeah, mate. I, listen, I, I get it totally. And I think I think there's always there's, there's balance to <clears throat> expectations. I don't think any Arsenal fan could expect to go from where you are now with Arteta to winning the title in, in one season because there isn't the quality of squad there, but it's having the expectations to, to want to get back to that point. And I was really impressed, for instance, with Arsenal's transfer policy at the beginning of the summer, because I feel that Tavares, Lokonga and Ben White, as forget the money that they came in for. I felt for the quality of play, I thought they're very, very good, but I was only backing it because at the same time, I knew this through, you know, what we're doing at snack that there was deep talks going on for the Tyro Martinez, for the Madisons of this world, Unana, you were linked with, if you'd have had those three players come in and then sign Lotaro Martinez, 
James Madison and Onana, it would have been a very good summer, as you say. But then you have to look at why is the club not setting public expectations? Why is there no accountability? I've heard footballers talk about how they they don't want to be abused online, but they want criticism. They want to be held accountable if they don't deliver the standards um, that the football club demands. And for Arsenal to remove all standards, all targets, be not just underwhelming in the window. So you think about the fact you were 10 million pounds or so shy of going after James Madison. You know, it was, yes, we saw the thing today from Fabrizio that it was the pull of Jose Mourinho that, that made you lose Tammy Abraham. It's, well, put your money in your pocket. Don't spend any money on Ramsdale and make, make, Tammy Abraham a better offer, like convince him to get around, like do something, do some. I'm not saying you you personally wanted Tammy Abraham, but you needed something and it just wasn't done. And I do feel really sorry for Arsenal fans right now. I've got to a point where I actually can't banter them anymore when I see what's there, going on. Like that, mate. I get loads of comments from Tottenham fans here, yeah? like saying it's gone past the point of just laughing at you, lot, even though like they ain't won nothing. Yeah, they're just like, we actually feel sorry for you, mate. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Chelsea, if Chelsea were in North London, do you think our fans would let them get away with winning six U European trophies in the time we've been at the Emirates? They've won two Europa Leagues, two Super Cups, two Champions Leagues. If they were in North London, would our fans accept that? Like, come on, they're four trophies away from overtaking us and being the third biggest club trophy-wise in England. That's unacceptable, mate. Yeah. No, mate, I, 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 I couldn't agree with you more. And as I say, with, with the banter side of things, it's because I don't like to see fans treated in the way in which I see... The the, the the Cronkies and the club treating you all. It, it's the it's the PR nonsense all the time, you know. And you saw it the other day with the Athletic article that went out. Clearly, the information has been provided by Arsenal Football Club around how the Ben White deal will only cost sixty seven million over five years, and Varane actually cost a hundred million. Therefore, it's better value for. It was almost they didn't say the word it's better value for money, but they were trying to imply it. And for me. When I read the article, I read the article because, you know, what it's like if you subscribe to The Athletic, you get the articles at five, six in the morning. It isn't until maybe seven, eight o'clock that clips of that start getting put across the social. So I'd already read it. And my first thought was Arsenal fans are not falling for that. And then I oh, saw all know. the big accounts. Like, <laughs> wow, have you seen this? Actually, it's great. First of all, people that were pushing that propaganda tell me that net spend is real. But that article literally disproves that net spend is real. Secondly, it's like, why are you even putting Varane and Ben White into the same conversation? It's embarrassing, you know, and I, sometimes I, I feel sorry for Arsenal fans. And then other times I'm like, but you are, some of you are cucks. You, you, you literally, <laughs> like the cuck holes. you literally allow someone else to smash your misses and you're accepting of it. And, you know, when your friends are going, oh, but why do you let that happen? It's like, oh, I'm just trying to keep her happy. I don't want to upset her. The guy she's doing it with is suffering from like anxiety. So it helps him. It's like you're coming out with weird excuses to protect the terrible running of your club. And a lot of people in the comments are saying, Terry, you backed the transfer window. I did to a point, but then you didn't deliver. Like I said, in the summer, if, if I go out on a Saturday by the best joint of beef, amazing potatoes, fresh veg, but I burn it all, doesn't matter about how good the ingredients were. I burnt the final result. You're still eating char-grilled food. And listen, Arsenal in the end, I think they really messed up this summer. And the Arteta conundrum is there. Like there are some reports, it's three or four games. And then there's people like yourself that think, I, and I agree with you, if he beats some of these small teams, there'll be this season starts now. We come again. We're we, back. You know, we're back. You know it's coming, mate. You know it's coming. 110%. You know it's the, coming. The maddest thing is, right, is um, this guy's probably broken about 30 or 40 records that are unwanted since he's been here. He could break another two at the weekend. I think um, I think it'd be the first time Norwich have beaten us since 1992. Wow. Yeah, in um, our ground. I think it was at our ground. Um, and they haven't won in London in 27 attempts. Yeah, but then we got Burnley after that. Burnley haven't won a home game in 11 games. And their next home game's Arsenal, and we ain't beating them three attempts under our tail. <laughs> That's not well, what I mean. And I, I spoke about this the other day, mate, and I was saying to quite a few Gooners, there is this weird uh belief that the season starts against Norwich. We'll beat Norwich, and that's when we start. I feel like that overconfidence can creep into your dressing room. I feel that overconfidence will inspire Norwich City because mm. game being in, uncompetitive against Chelsea and Man City is embarrassing. Losing to Norwich, who are looked at as the worst team in the Premier League, I mean, and even drawing and not scoring against them, it 
it should be a sackable offence. It, it should just be a sackable offence, irrespective of what's going on. There should have been loads of sackable offences. Tottenham are sat top and we're bottom for the first time ever. Yeah, worst start in 67 years. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, I could go on and on and on. He was breaking records that are his records now. Like, he's made the record. Like, last time we um, we lost our first three games is his record, I think. Goes back to whenever. Yeah, yeah. Um, Aston Villa, when they beat us 3-0 last season, it's the first time Aston Villa have done us by three at our ground since 1928 or something. It's like, this geezer's breaking records that go back to before my granddad was born. Do you know what I mean? Like, and my granddad died about 18 years ago. Like, it's mad. It's actually insane. And the thing is, like you said, Arsenal fans online, I don't know what it is about this manager. I genuinely don't. They just seem to, they just seem to love it. Like... And the thing is, like, I look at it and I just think, well, a lot of our fans online have probably grown up under the last decade of Wenger excuses. Like, so it's no, it's no coincidence that they're going to love off his captain that broke the trophy drought. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. then, and then when when you see Chelsea go and do 100 mil on Lukaku, because they don't actually understand football properly, oh, they've spent 100 million. Well, they ain't they actually made 35 million profit because they sell off kids that have never kicked a ball in the first team for 20 million pound a pop. So it's yeah. like... You know, we, we sold Joe Willock. It's the only player we sold, which is just a joke. Like, you know, Edu's sitting there saying that we tried to get obligations to buy on the loan deals. We tried to sell players. Well, listen, mate, I'm trying to get Kelly Brooks' phone number. It ain't happened yet. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just makes me laugh. It's like, we tried. Yeah, well, you know, then we... And the, the maddest thing about it is, Terry White, is the players that I mentioned earlier, Madison, Awa, uh, Basuma, uh, Max Ahrens, Anana, Matt Ryan on a free... Yeah, you could then bring Saliba back, who's absolutely balling out in France, team of the week and all of that. Yeah, you could bring Genduzi back, again, team of the week, scored the other day in the French national team. And all of a sudden, you look at that squad then and you think, flipping hell, we've actually got a chance to get in that top four this season. Yeah, whether we do or not, I don't know. But at least you'll be looking at it, I think, implying we've actually got a decent squad here. But to go and do 50 million quid on England's fifth-choice centre-back, who can't head a ball, yeah, it is, I think his header in is 49% last season. So then you go and do 20 million pounds on a centre back who's going to play right back who can head a ball. So why don't you just put Saliba in there who's six foot four and can do it all? Yeah. It makes well, no sense. Why do you feel though there's still a lot of the generic Arsenal accounts? You know, the ones I'm talking about. Why do you feel like a lot of these accounts still every day, one push out positives, positives, positives in every direction? And at the same time, like ignore the problems. Why do you think they're doing that? And, and also, why are Arsenal fans not waking up to this? Right. In terms of why do they do it? The average age of a person that probably owns one of them accounts is probably 19. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one account, I'm not going to say which one it is, um, started a YouTube channel and couldn't even get 600 subs. Yet he's got about 180,000 followers on Twitter. Well, why couldn't you get your followers over, mate? Yeah, and it's not just Arsenal to do that. There's a, there's a couple of other clubs, fans, that have got 200,000 and can't get any subs. Yeah, it's because once people go and watch it, they think, oh, actually, you ain't got a clue what you're talking about. And it's a lot easier to hide behind a, a cannon or a footballer profile picture and just copy and paste. And the other reason I think, the, the reason I actually think they do it is because they like the confidence boost they get by getting 10,000 likes. Yeah, it gives them a boost in their life because their life's probably pretty poor or sad or, uh, I don't know, maybe they get bullied. Uh, hopefully they don't. But, you know, there's probably underlying issues behind that. And another reason is I think a lot of them want to get it up to, like, stupid figures so they can go and sell it off. Yeah, or maybe get, like, so there's, a, there's another account um, that um, has a link with, um, what's it called? Um, VBET, Yeah. And he's in an executive box at Arsenal because that's Arsenal's official, uh, official betting sponsor. Uh, so okay. in the executive box and have pictures with Lacazette and Aubameyang every week. Yeah, so of course, he's not going to put out any negative. Another reason as well um, is the majority of these generic accounts live abroad. Yeah, so if they live abroad and they can't get to games because of logistics, finances, whatever it may be, lockdowns, et cetera, et cetera, I've noticed that they're more positive than somebody that can go every week. Yeah, because like I said this on my my thing the other day, like if you live in America, for example, and I'm just using America as the example. Yeah, If you lived in America 
and you go to college in America or you work in a shop in America or whatever, and all your mates support Man City or Man United or Liverpool, Tottenham, whatever, yeah, none of them can go to games because of logistics or they've been to one game here when they're doing American tour or whatever, yeah? You want to support your team. You want to be proud about your team, yeah? So you're going to go and buy the shirts. You're going to go and buy all the merch. You're going to go online. You're going to be super positive about the football club because you're supporting it from afar. So you're never going to slag the club off, yeah? And that's why a lot of them do it. Like people, people say to me all the time, oh, you're so negative. I'm like, since when's it been negative to want to win a title? <laughs> like, you know, if people think I'm negative and I'm rude and this and that, do not go to a live football match. Like genuinely, I don't think you make it. Like you, you'd be mortified at some of the stuff said at live football matches. Yeah. And it's like, it's not yeah. a nice place, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, especially if like I went from the, uh, towards the end of the finger out days, mate, that was horrible. Like horrible, man. Like really nasty. Like not just I with think, fans arguing with each other, but with. I the agree. I, I, players. I, I mean, live games can be very, very poisonous places. I think what's interesting for me, and I think this is fans. My charges, and, Harry. Sorry, mate. No, 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 no worries, bro. No worries. No worries. No worries. We'll wait for Lee to come back. Any um, super chat questions you want to throw in? Uh, someone here says, "Please bring on a gal. We need it." uh listen 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 th th these two gentlemen have had their conversations privately and whatever else they've done uh we it, there's there is no we're going to be doing live calls later if anyone remember there's no echo chambers if a gal phones in a gal phones in but there's no setup on that but thank you any other stupid chat questions you've got get them in now uh any questions you've got for lee we are talking chelsea title contenders we're talking cristiano ronaldo and a bit more a little later on in the show make sure you've smashed that like button for us we're getting close towards three thousand live views which is amazing so smash that like button let's get it past a thousand likes ladies and gentlemen but what you're saying there about fans i think the, i don't just think it's you know international fans me and you both know you know, you, you live in Spain, so, you know, you, you'll see this as, as much as anybody else. International fans are so important for our football clubs in terms of the growth, the money that comes in. And it's also an honour for me as a, as a United fan to see people from other parts of the world, like, fall in love with the Premier League and, and English football. And it's great. I sometimes feel, though, there is this, and I see it with a lot, there's a few young guys I started chatting, there's a young guy that's that works at Snack with us, and I was chatting to him, and he still said he used to run one, he just wanted to have one of those accounts that was always positive about his club. And he just said that he started doing that because, like you said, it wasn't a bullying thing for him, but it was like, I wanted to feel part of something. And yeah. at the time, being positive got more of a positive response than being negative. And he said what he then noticed is as things started to go a little wrong for his club, him being positive got become toxic. So he went, he changed and went straight to being toxic because that what everybody <laughs> wants a positive response. And I've seen that with people where, I feel like some fans, content creators, people, on, you know, genuine people that, you know, David J David Smith, who has his name and profile out there. And then you might have a AFC tray or an AFC. There's always tray. There's a tray for every club. If you know, it says a Chelsea tray. <laughs> I don't know who these trays are. I the same guy just trolling everyone. <laughs> the same guy. He just has different profiles personally. But it's like, I feel like it's this element of I'm going to, I'm going to tweet in the way in which the wind is blowing because I want the most amount of attention. And that's and the thing. You're right, yeah, because... Uh, I'm sorry to cut you, yeah, you're right, because these accounts never actually give their opinion, yeah? They never actually give their opinion. They give the opinion of what's fashionable at the time. And it's funny because it doesn't matter what you put out, your, like, myself. I'll give an example. Yesterday, it was Bukayo Saka's birthday, I think, yeah? Right, somebody put a tweet out where he nutmegged the Newcastle lad and uh, pinged it in the box and Pepe scored. And he put, he's been our most reliable player for two years. So I just quote tweeted it and said he hasn't scored a Premier League goal for seven months. Yeah. All of a I sudden, I get, some, I get some lad. And that's factual. Yeah. He hasn't scored since February in the league. Right. So some lad goes, Why are you being negative? I said, Since when saying the truth negative? Then he was like, It's nonsensical, which means if you Google it, nonsensical, it means it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Right. And um, I was like, well, what are you talking about, mate? He has not scored a goal since February. So what's the issue here? Like, I'm just making a statement that's factual. But that's what you get. It's like, you know, every, and that's the way society is, unfortunately, Terry. Like, everything has to be, like, you have to be super sickly toxic positive now. And everything has to be rainbows and sparkles, like, and unicorns. No. I grew up in the 80s and 90s, yeah, where you say it as it is. And that's how I've been, like... You know, yeah, it just upsets people. I, 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 I agree. And and I think that some and sometimes I think it's also I want to be seen as the best fan possible. And it's 100%. the Overton window yeah. changes. Someone in the comments here says, Terry, that's what I do when it comes to United and Ollie. 
But I don't if you actually listen to what I say. I think, <laughs> example, and we're going to get onto it later. I think Man United's squad is good enough to win the league. I'm not convinced that Oli is a good enough manager to make us win the league. Ironically, I think that's what's going to make us win the league this year. I feel like he's going to do a bit of an England judge where, nah, United can't. I seen video the other day. I can't lie. I had a bit of a chuckle. <laughs> oh, I, I don't, if we get onto that later, I, I don't even know why I think we're going to do it. It's just like a feat. You know, like sometimes you have like a chat with your boss and he's like, oh, I need to come see me in the morning. You're like, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. You just get like a feeling. You don't know what it is. That's just how it feels. But yeah, I sometimes feel like some fans, just, I need to be positive because that's fashionable right now. And as a YouTuber, I'm not going to go into who this person is because they've spoke to me privately and you know I don't share private stuff. But they've they've like, had fallings out in recent times with people they work with because they've started to criticise elements of, say, the Arsenal management and the hierarchy. And some of their sort of fellow content creators are like, no, no, you're, you're coming out of character. Like, why are you saying these things? And it's like, well, I'm not a character. I speak how I feel at any one particular time. People should be allowed to change their minds. And it's almost social media then boxes everybody in to say, you can't change your mind. And that's the maddest bit for me. Like, I've always said about you, Lee, if Arteta legit turned it around and started playing great football, started winning football matches, like, you would up. say, yeah. I got it wrong. And that's yeah. what the important bit is here. Like, to be able to say, I was wrong, that's all anybody cares about when it when it comes to opinions. And I got that wrong. This is and now the funny, what I think. The funny thing is, people always say, like, yeah, you're negative. Like, you know, we was on the spaces the other night. There was a few people that were jumping on saying it, yeah? Like... And like you're negative, you're you're building a brand. I get that one all the time. You're building a brand off of Arteta being rubbish. I get that one all the time. And I'm like, I started my channel when Unai Emery was winning. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And it's like, I don't get it. I started a vlog channel, which has got nothing to do with football. Yeah. And and it's like, I'm I've got six thousand subs on that. So it's like yeah. it's very easy to say that you're like. And the funniest thing is the most ironic thing about the whole lot. Yeah. So then people say. Oh, you love it when Arsenal lose, you get more views. My most viewed videos are either, I think the most viewed is the Champions League final from two years ago. I did a watch along. Second is when Claude passed away and I did the video. Third is the FA Cup semi. Fourth is the FA Cup final that we won. Yeah. And then after that, I think it's like um, another Barcelona game, watch along. Yeah. Transfer videos. And it's like, I think I've only got one loss which is eighth, I think it was the Burnley game. It's only one loss in my top 10 most viewed videos. And it's like, you know, I, I actually do better when Arsenal wins. So can they hurry up and win? Fans, fans <laughs> I'll be on the yacht with Edu. <laughs> At the end of the day, bro, fans have got to realise that social media and what we do, content creators, in 10 years' time will be the most dominant force in media. And we know that because if you watch Gary Neville, Rio Ferdinand, all these guys are launching YouTube channels. Like what Rio Ferdinand's doing with man like Joel and, and Steve, they're killing it because they've created something which is YouTube inspired and it's organic and it's real. It's where people want to come. Nobody criticizes in sport, forget like politics and social and cultural issues because that, that's a whole different kettle of fish. But when something bad happens at a club and the media talk about it, no one's like, how dare they speak about bad things? It's all bury your head in the sand. Why should a fan like you, as a, a, across all your platforms, what, 100,000 plus followers across over all your platforms-ish, why should you not be allowed to express yourself? And you know what? If you, you, you've given it, you give your time and your energy, your attention to building something. None of us started YouTube thinking we were going to make, turn it into a business or be able to earn a living out of it. No one did. No one knew it would be possible. And it's now happened. And it strikes me as, as as jealousy and it strikes me as bitterness and it strikes me as just trying to, a lot of people trying to silence football opinion because I don't want to hear what you're saying. I don't want to hear. Yeah, I've had to do this. Like, nobody starts it by wanting to like thinking that you're going to earn a living out of it. Yeah. Because if it was that easy to do it full time, like we both do yeah. why ain't everyone doing it then? Like I didn't know when I first started my original first other channel, that I was going to get 12,000 subs on that and then lock myself out. And I was mortified, man. I was like nearly in tears. I was like, I've worked for a year for this channel. Yeah, and then I had six months off and the, the mad love I was getting from people, like, do another channel, do another channel. So I set up the one I'm on and it was just like, boom, like literally flew. And I was like, I can't believe it. And that was under Unai Emery going 22 games unbeaten, getting us to a Europa yeah. League final getting us to literally, well, we were third, I think, with five games to go or something, yeah? And it's like, it's very easy to say you only profit off of losses and you only um, you only get views when we lose. Let's be real here, right? 
Yeah, I, I did a video um, at the weekend about Edu, and I had nearly 4,000 people watching it. Right. Yeah, but I was on a mad one. I can't lie. I, I, that video got demonetized because I swore so much. Yeah, and I knew it was going to get demonetized <laughs> after about five minutes of me getting in. Yeah, I, I thought I've committed now. I've just got to carry on, right? Keep but, going. But like I said, my most viewed video is the Champions League final between Bayern and I can't remember who it was PSG. Yeah, Bayern and PSG. And I'm just sitting there chilling. Like, you know, my fan cam for the Man City game is on about 68,000 views or something, or 67,000 views. But I sat there, Terry, yeah, and I was just, hello, hello. <laughs> and I sat there and I was just chatting, yeah. Hi. You come to help daddy. <laughs> Right, you when I'm done, okay? Mwah. Go fun. This is the beauty of live streaming, isn't it, Terry? <laughs> My yeah. son's very desperate to come over and see what's going on. Um, you, you don't know what video is going to get views and which video isn't, yeah? And, and this is the madness, like, obviously, when Arsenal lose, people will expect people to have meltdowns, yeah? If you go and have a look, right, at the watch along I did for Man City, in that first hour, I did the build up to the game. I predicted we'd be 2 0 down in 20 minutes. It was actually in 12 minutes. I predicted a red card and I predicted 5 0. If I can see that an hour before kickoff, why couldn't Arteta see any of this? Right? The Chelsea <laughs> game, yeah, obviously, um, if you're going to have a look at the watch along for the Chelsea game, I actually got less views on that. And that was a loss than I think I did on the West Brom game that we won 6 0. And that was some dead second round League Cup game. And nobody cares about the League Cup. The views are always low on that, yeah. But I think they've yeah. still got more on the watch along than the Chelsea loss. So it's very easy to just say, oh, yeah, well, you only get views because you lose. You've built a brand off a of losing. No, I've built it's, it's, I've built it's, 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 all it's, it's all it's all a, it's all a nonsense, as you say. And at the end of the day, mm. people like to listen to what social media content creators have got to say now. You see more and more. Look, look at look at and do you know what it is with me? Like I'm I'm a I get a bad rep. Really, with a lot of other content creators, people often think like, I'll challenge, you know, "Well, I challenge people's opinions, but I'm not challenging their status." And that's what I think. I, I often, I maybe don't articulate it right. It's I might see flex, put an opinion out that I disagree with, but I no longer challenge it publicly because I don't want people to think I'm hating on flex. I think I watch what flex is doing. Flex is blazing a storm. He's killing the industry. He's moved. He's still a great content creator and YouTuber. He's moved into the, I don't, I honestly think in the next year to a year and a half, he will be hosting things on things like Sky Sports, legit proper. And for, like, I'm so proud that a, that a content creator has done that because one, it shows others they can achieve it, but also he's real. He's real in the way that he presents. And it, it doesn't sound like someone who went to like, you know, a foul actor that's become a TV presenter. Do you know what I mean? Or, or <laughs> someone, that to, someone that used to be in a boy band and played academy football and now has no work so they've given him a presenting job. It's like, no, he, he's a real football fan that has a skill of presenting and asking questions. And I love seeing that. Other football fans, I think where their jealousy comes from is in their head, they might know more about football than you. And like you said about some of those Twitter accounts that have big followers, I think they can write in, in, in 140 characters something that resonates but when it comes to the articulation, when it comes to speaking, yeah. when it comes to their personality, they can't do it. They're too and dull. They and they to blogging and in the nobody end. wants to listen to them. And I, I've had this before. I remember being at the FIFA Best, Best Awards. We were making some content before the, the, the evening event. And me and DT, we were all buzzing because we were we had the best place on the red carpet that night. And there's a journalist from The Telegraph that said, oh, who are you guys here with? And I said, oh, we're, we're fan media. And he scoffed and went, ugh, that's not a thing. <laughs> And I'm like, I know why he was like that. Cause we were making all this content that all these journalists were watching us and it was natural. We weren't rehearsing. We just, yeah. the, the maddest thing is my first Friday night live show, it, it bombed in the sense of our audio it's out, but we did a full live show with major segments and scenes and VTs, no rehearsal, just boom, no auto cue, no cue card, bang, done. Professional presenters, they rehearse for four days before they go live on a Saturday. Like it's, we, we've got skills and I'm not trying to sound arrogant here. We all have. That's true. And, and what you're going to see, people are going to see in the next five to 10 years is more of that is going to become mainstream. And the way that what the mainstream have learned is let's put out raw content. Let's make it raw because people prefer it because everything became too commercialized and stale, mate. But listen, viewers, any questions you've got for Lee, get them in now. We're going to move on a little bit. We're going to talk a bit about Ronaldo and Man United. We're going to talk Chelsea title Ooh. challenge as well. 
I'm recreating that when Arteta gets sacked, so I'm going to join a gym sometime this week because uh, my six packs disappeared real quick since I got back to Spain. <laughs> bro, mine's mine's been hibernating since lockdown, bro. It's gone, absolutely gone. But smash that like button. Let's get past a thousand likes, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do this. Cristiano Ronaldo back in the Premier League. I, I need to get your thoughts on this, mate. As a football fan, he's back. What what are you saying? Oh, man, you, you bought Sancho, Ronaldo and Varane for less than we spent on a bunch of nobodies, really. <laughs> it's kind of mad, isn't it? It is kind of mad. And 36 years old, he's as fit as a fiddle. Like, I mean, let's be real. Yeah, I don't think there's a single geezer on the planet that wouldn't want to look like him physically. <laughs> like, let's be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he ripped his top off the other night in that stoppage time winner, mate, it was just like, oh my days, you're still looking good, Ronaldo, yeah? And it's like, I don't like, I don't know. Like, I've had conversations with people and they think that, oh, I don't think it's going to be as good. But then I've had conversations with other people that say, yo, he's going to be top scorer this season. And it's like, I'm kind of in between. I don't think he's going to be the Ronaldo he was four or five years ago. Yeah, where he was just slapping. Even even a couple of years ago, I know he finished. Did he finish top scorer last season in Serie A? I think he did, didn't he? He, he finished in front of Lukaku. I think somebody yeah. else got golden boot. I think somebody else got the golden boot. Did they? Okay, interesting. Um, yeah. But I, don't, I do think that he'll bag... I do think he'll bag about 20-odd goals this season. No, 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 it was him. He got 20... I think, he, yeah, he got 29 goals. Lukaku got 24, okay. yeah. Oh, he was finished five ahead of him. There you go. Yeah, according to this, it's just one thing, a page I'm on here. But yeah. I do think he'll do very well. And the, and the thing is, like, Man United have got a lot of good players. You haven't got a good manager. Uh, but the reason you've got Champions League football is because if Pogba don't do it or Bruno don't do it, Martial turns up. If none of them three turn up, Cavani will turn up. If none of them four turn up, Greenwood's turning up at the minute. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like you've got so many match winners in your team. And now you add Ronaldo into that. Yeah, and Sancho into that. And I know he hasn't started off great. Yeah, it's going to take him a bit of time to get used to this league. It's a lot quicker than playing abroad. Yeah, but Ronaldo, I do think he, he's going he's gonna to be on it, man. He's gonna, it's going to be like walking out on that pitch at Old Trafford. You know what he's all about anyway, in terms of like he loves it, doesn't he? He loves the limelight. It's all about him. Yeah, like when he's on the pitch anyway. Off the pitch, I'm sure he's completely different. I bet he's really quiet and stuff like that. But on the pitch, it's like, it's all about me, mate. I'm the best. So, you know, he's going to be up for it. And I fear when we play you in November, mate. <laughs> like, literally, I am. I probably won't even watch it because it's just going to be scenes, man. But I do think he's going to do really well. I don't think, I don't think he'll end up top scorer. I think Lukaku or Kane, I'd, I'd probably, if I was to put money on it, I'd probably say Lukaku. Yeah, but I do think he'll be in the mix, 100%, mate. You can never write Ronaldo off. Like, what he's achieved is just mad. And people will always say that um, he's better than Messi because he's done it in other countries, this and that. For me, personally, I'm, I prefer Messi. Yeah, but I always rate Ronaldo because he's had to graft just to be in the conversation. And yeah. now he's in the conversation and more. Do you know what I mean? So... So yeah, good no, luck to him, man. I, I couldn't. I, I agree with a lot of what you said there in terms of not not the Messi Ronaldo thing. Everyone knows I'm always going to pick Ronaldo. <laughs> pure bias. My, my, do you know what mine is though. Mine is a preference thing in the sense of I like the directness. You know, like a lot of people don't like about Ronaldo is like when he'll get angry when he doesn't go his own way. I'm like that when I used, used to compete and I was doing sports. That's how I was. I, I my standards were high. I've been watching the Last Dance recently, the, the Jordan calling. thing. And I'm hearing the way Jordan behaved and treated people. I'm like, yeah, that's again. Oh, mate, maybe it's and Jack would be in tears if he was in our dressing oh, room. Mate, <laughs> me, that's what I feel like Ronaldo is like to a certain degree. I can imagine him walking in, and I don't know. Say it's prep time. I don't know how this works in football because I've never been at that level. But maybe it's a time where people are meant to be getting you know a bit of silence and getting ready for something. If you've got yeah, Lingard moonwalking, <laughs> well, no, I can imagine like Lingard's on Instagram doing something, right? And, and then I can imagine Ronaldo like slapping him in the face and saying, "Stop!" Like I can I can imagine him wanting to do that or even doing it. Yeah. So I think it's great. I, I also, I, mean, I think he 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 could be the top goal scorer. Like I said earlier, I think we'll get onto the title contenders properly later. He has the ability to score his way to Man United winning a Premier League title because. He can still score too much. And the Ireland game was, I think, an eye-opener for me especially because those two goals from those headers were just average lofted balls into the box. Yeah, where, And I know what everyone thought. It's the same as me. Oh, what a waste of a cross. And then he appeared from nowhere. 
<laughs> and got to it. And that that's that should be the scary thing for people. But what I do feel about Ronaldo coming back, and I said it last night, I'm going to say it again, he's got a chance to surpass Henri as the Premier League's GOAT. If he I comes, your tweet and everyone everyone was like, what about Shearer? <laughs> well, again, like Shearer for me. You're never, very clever in the way you post. I can't lie. Yeah. You're very clever. <laughs> I, I just think no, but I just think he does. I, I think he has a, a, a like a lot How of people. How far behind Henri is he in terms of the Premier League goals? Goal wise, he's a little bit behind. I, I was looking at that earlier. So I think Omri has 120, 25, maybe maybe 28. I read. Uh, 100, sorry, 175, a lot, lot more. He's on 80, he's on 84. However, a lot it's of Ronaldo's early goals wise, but yes, it won't overtake him goal wise. But you start, I start to look at it from the sense he's already got more prems. Like when he was in England already, he's got a Champions League, two League Cups, one FA Cup, three prems compared to two FA Cups and two prems. So trophies is there. Individual awards, we, we know Ronaldo surpasses him, we just know this already. I don't think he's passed him yet because Ronaldo had an, a couple more years where he was just performing. Those three years well, where we... Premier League-wise, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So when he's yeah. here, I think if Ronaldo comes back, scores lots of goals, and Man United win big honours in that time, I honestly think the cop, that there is suddenly someone that can legitimately challenge Henri as the Premier League's greatest ever player. Now, Ronaldo, for me, yeah, is I the greatest... I disagree with you about Henri being the greatest Premier League player anyway because it's Burke. Do you? Burkham. Burkham. Oh, Burkham's better than Thierry Henry. Yeah. How? What do you mean, how? You've watched Burkham. But. Bro, 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 wait, 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 wait. Well, no, 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 no. You need to explain this. Burkham better than Henry. Oh, bro. I put Eric Cantona above Henri as well. Yeah, I did a, I did a, a top three. Uh, Somebody I, asked me on a Q&A months and months and months ago. Yeah, and, and I think I put Zola. Was it Zola? Above yeah, Henri. I, I like that type of... I Don't get it twisted. I love Thierry Henri, yeah? Like, that guy's given me some of the best moments in my life watching football, yeah? But I like a player, which is probably why I like Messi, because they just make it effortless. Yeah, like it's just effortless. They're always 10 levels ahead of everyone. They can see the whole picture before the ball even comes to their feet. Yeah, Thierry Henry was unreal, man. Don't get it twisted. But Burkamp for me, levels. Yeah, the best footballer I've seen at this football club. Yeah, Henry, I've, I've seen them both. So I'm kind of happy either way. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. For me, Burkamp was just mad. Zola was sick. Eric Cantona was sick. David Ginola, I like players like that as well. But like, don't get it twisted. I do love Thierry Henry. Yeah, I love yeah. the guy. But he ain't the Premier League's goat. Burkamp is. Wow. I mean, for me, like that's a that's a that's a, I've never heard that one. I obviously didn't see that stream of yours. Like, I think Burkamp's very very good. Uh, Cantona, but you putting Cantona above Henri. I'm not going to challenge that one. Like, I'm never challenging that one. <laughs> People are um, challenging me on Zola. Zola, listen, I've seen Zola, and, and I'm going to harp on about this story one more time. Right? He went to visit a young boy that was very ill in Great Ormond Street Hospital, and Chelsea were playing Norwich the very next game. Yeah, and he was a Chelsea fan, this kid. And Zola said to him, I'm going to score a special goal for you against Norwich. Right? One, to have the audacity to even say that. Two, he goes to the game. A corner gets whipped in. Zola runs into the pen penalty box, jumps up in the air and back heels one. Out off the ground, back heels it, top corner. Yeah, and then pulled the T-shirt up and that was for the kid. It was like, could you imagine how that kid must have felt if he hadn't have scored? <laughs> so to say it and then go and do it from solo was yeah no i hear you. that that's i didn't know that story that is that is a goated story there's no doubt mm. I, I i just you know what i mean and and for me we can remove Henri from that tweet and just cristiano, <laughs> ronaldo, cristiano ronaldo has the chance to become the premier league goat. i mean i think he's already the, the greatest player to ever play in the prem and i think if we take our preferences out of it in terms of just what he's won the goals that he scored the awards that he's got the trophies i, I, I think people a lot of people would argue that's the case we actually had a debate last night and I am putting this clip out later today, Husson, who said that when it comes to looking at who the best players are, we should completely discount the trophies they've won and right. only look at individual award. You agree? Yeah. Okay, why? I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you exactly why. Yeah. Pascal Seagun is an invincible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Olivier Giroud, although I do like Giroud, and I appreciated him more when he left, by the way. Yeah, because I see him slapping it at Chelsea. I was like, oh, this guy. Right. But Olivier Giroud and Cleberson have won a World Cup. Messi and Ronaldo haven't. So what's the trophy's got to do with it? I don't, I don't understand. I never understood that. It's like, you know, a lot of people use the trophies one. Like, 
I don't get it. Like, I, I just look at players and I think, right, individual ability, how good are you as a footballer? Yeah, if the trophies back, like Matt Letizia, you grew up watching Matt Letizia, that guy probably never won anything. Yeah, one of the so, best footballers I've ever so seen. I, I get that point. So I, I definitely agree that you can't compare Jonathan Greening having a Champions League winner's medal to uh, Frank Lampard having a Champions League winner's medal. But I think when we're talking about the elite player, so when you think about Matt, Matt Letizia is a great example. I rated him so much. Mm. But what we don't know is how he would perform in a Premier League game that you have to win to, to, to stay in the title race, how he would perform in a semi-final or a final when he is required to deliver. That, that okay, let me stop you there. Sorry, let me stop you on. there. That guy single-handedly kept Southampton in the league every season. No, and, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I understand that's high that. pressure, man. And I, and I understand that's high pressure. But finals, semi-finals, the world's eye on you. Again, at Southampton, there isn't... The world and its dog are not looking at you and putting pressure on you. When Cristiano Ronaldo, this is how big Cristiano Ronaldo's second debut is for Man United. Journalists today are pushing for the three o'clock blackout to be lifted outside of COVID times. It'd be the first time ever in, in UK history that that's allowed to happen because they believe it's that special. Imagine the pressure on Ronaldo on, on Saturday if he starts, knowing that they've lifted a, a, a lifelong ban on three o'clock games outside of yeah. COVID uh, settings to watch him play. That pressure, I think, shouldn't be discounted. What I mean by so what I mean by that is if you're a player that's never been in those situations or you've failed in those situations, it doesn't matter for me that if you like oh, Harry Kane's a great example. If Harry Kane breaks Shearer's goal scoring record, but never scores in a final and never delivers enough in, in the clutch moments to win his team a trophy, I think that goes that go, I think that slightly goes against him. And I also use that with Thierry Henry. When people say greatest strikers ever. Thierry Henry never delivering in a final is like a it's a it's an X it's an X against that box. Does that make sense? Like Didier Drogba didn't score as many goals and wasn't a good a technical footballer as Henri, but he delivered in so many finals and semi-finals for his club. I think those moments led to the trophies, which is why Chelsea are, part of the reason that Chelsea are catching Arsenal in most trophies won. So but I then, do but then that goes against your argument because you just said Thierry Henry never delivered in a final, but Thierry Henry won the World Cup for France in ninety eight. But yeah, he didn't. He was what nineteen. Yeah, but he didn't deliver in that no, final. He scored twice in that fight in that um in that tournament. Yeah, he did, and I think you, you uh, which fact, helped them get to course, the final, I, which I, they then what eventually I, won. What I think with a lot of it is that you don't discount it just because you have to look at the overall impact some somebody has. And I think if somebody is pivotal or played an important part in 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 their team winning trophies, I don't think that should be. I, I don't think it should be discounted, but that's what difference of opinions are for. I've heard that twice in two days. I've never heard it before, but viewers, what do you think? Should yeah, trophies, come on. Count? Listen, should the trophies tro count? Trophies count a bigger player up or not? <laughs> because trophies, tro individual tro um, like awards, yeah, cool. Yeah, but for me, it's, it's 11, well, it's actually a 25-man game now. It's a 25-man squad. So, yeah. you know, well, who was the guy that's at Sheffield United now that went from Liverpool and he had his hair cut with the Champions League medal on? Ah, uh, Bruce Nahum. Ryan Brewster. He's got a Champions League medal. No, and, and, yeah, and on examples you know like I mean? that, I'm on your side 110% with. With that example, Brewster having a Champions League medal doesn't make him better than Marcus Rashford. But if you're talking about Lewandowski versus Harry Kane, on technical ability, you can prefer Harry Kane. But I think... The way that Lewandowski is delivered in finals and in things like that for his club, I think it. I think it. I think you have to factor that in when it comes but to at the same time. Lewandowski great. plays for a team levels, levels, levels better than Tottenham. If you yes, put, if you take Lewandowski out of Bayern Munich and put Kane in there, yeah, Kane would probably do the same. There or thereabouts. I, see, I agree, but then I also think, but then the expectation. It, it's for me. I think what we're discounting here is managing the ex, like Spurs. This is how the expectations are different. Bayern Munich fans don't accept defeat in any which way, shape, or form. Same as Real Madrid, Man United, Chelsea fans have become like that. Spurs fans celebrated. They, they were already winners because they got to the final. Like, do you get what I mean? Like, there was, <laughs> it, it, that's what I mean. It's, uh, what we don't know about that's Harry Kane is how he would perform for a team that don't accept defeat. And but that's, that's why, why he wanted to go to City. Well, because he wanted to prove himself. And I think yeah. he's doing the right thing. I think he's doing the right thing in that, mate. But listen, viewers, we want your thoughts and feelings. We're getting close to a thousand likes. Give it a smash. Oh, on this talk about the Premier League, who, in your opinion, Lee, 
are, are the title favourites. You know, Chelsea have got, you know, they're flying under um, Tuchel. They've got Lukaku that you've tipped to maybe be the top goal scorer. City, 100 million on Grealish. United with Ronnie. Liverpool in the background. Like, who, Who's your title contenders, uh, favourites? Well, seeing as I'm on loan to Man City this season, <laughs> yeah, there's an obligation to, um, or an option to extend it another season as well. Depends how long Arteta's here for. Um, I'm going to say City. I think, like, you know, people say that they needed a striker and Lukaku's going to be the difference now to get Chelsea to win it. They did the title without really a striker. But Gabriel Jesus, let's not forget, he is still there. Yeah, and he is bagging. Yeah, he played very well against Norwich. I know you can say it's only Norwich, but he also done very well against us. And again, you can say it's only us. But how many times are you going to keep saying, well, it's only that team? So he'll bag 15 goals this season. Yeah, he's a good player, Jesus. Yeah, he's not the elite level like Aguero was. Yeah, but I think City. I think now that they've got Grealish, they've got Mares, my boy. Um, Grealish as well, like I said. Then they've got Jesus. They've got Sterling. Kevin De Bruyne ain't even played yet, I don't think. I think he's been injured. They've just got such a good team. And defensively, you just can't really get at them. Like, you genuinely can't. Like, Kyle Walker is still absolutely lightning quick with his recovery. Um, yeah. You've got um, Ruben Diaz. Yeah, John Stone's been sat on the bench, I think, most games. Like, they've got a wicked squad, man. A wicked squad. And they've got probably the best manager. Yeah, but I do think Chelsea are going to run them quite close. I think Chelsea have probably come second. I think Liverpool... Maybe third. Yeah, I just think with Liverpool, I think getting rid of Wijnaldum, I think that's, they're going to regret that. I genuinely do. Like, I know they've got Virgil van Dijk back, which is a massive lift, but I just think getting rid of that midfielder that's just 7 out of 10 every single week, Yeah, you, you can't buy that again, man. Like He was just Mr. Consistency, Wijnaldum, and he chipped in with big goals as well. So I think with Chelsea, I think the problem is, is if Lukaku gets an injury then you're back to Werner again. Yeah, and I think that's where they're going to... And now they ain't got Tammy. Obviously, he's gone. Yeah, but I think City just... And I don't think they'll walk away with it. I think it'd be maybe five, six points. It'll go down to the last three or four games or something. And I think Chelsea will come second, Liverpool third. I don't see Man United being in it, if I'm honest, even with the Ronaldo factor. I just think defensively, yeah, you lot are not great. Yeah, and I think, like... Your midfield is the reason that you're not great because you're playing Fred and McTominay in most games and them two in front of Harry Maguire and Varane. When I watched you lot against um, against Wolves and Adama mm. just skipped through everyone and I was like, oh my God, where's the rest of the players? And you're like, Varane and Maguire were about 80 yards further. I was like, why are you so far away? <laughs> like, yeah. And I think little things like that. And I can see scenes this season where McTominay is pinging a ball at Ronaldo and it's going flying out the stadium and Ronaldo's just going to rip his head off a few times. Like, <laughs> I just think like, that's the only thing I worry with Ronaldo at Man United is that we had it with Thierry Henry towards, I think it was the last season he was here. It was like, everyone has to pass the ball to Henry. Yeah, when Henry yeah. left the following season, we actually played better football because everyone was like, oh, we don't have to pass to him now. Yeah, and I think you yeah. might, I don't think, I don't, I'm not, if I was... If I was to say out of a percentage, I'd say maybe maybe 50-50 it could be that. Because Ronaldo demands to be the top boy. He's got the number seven. Yeah, Jaden Sancho didn't get number seven, did he? Yeah. yeah, it's not really I mean, I mean, again, yeah he, he is. Do you know what's interesting, though? That nothing you've said, again, is illogical. And I, I'm, I'm always a big fan in terms of if someone says something that I, I, I understand, I'll always get it from that angle. But it's everything you've said is why I think we're going to do it. And it reminds me of England in the summer where, where I did so many shows. <laughs> well, 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 yeah, but no one, but we, but I'll go back to this. I can only really speak about my platform and, and, and the terrorist community is where I do most of my talk, do most of my talking, but across socials as well. When anyone said, oh, England could do well with this tournament, I would say 90% struggle to get out of the group. Won't get past well, the first I said, I said won't get out of the group. And we ended up getting to a final. So what I, I mean, I don't look at it as we bottle the final. I think we surpassed expectations getting getting past Germany. So it was everything felt like a win. And I just feel like Man yeah, United. See, so Terry, let me stop you. Let me stop everything you just said about Tottenham five minutes ago. Yeah, about they were happy just to get to the final because they'd already like that's their trophy. Was exactly how England fans felt about getting to that final. It was like well, it don't matter if we don't win it. Yeah, it don't matter. We've got to the final. Whereas it should have been elite mentality of, no, we have uh, to win it or it's failure. I, I, I understand that, but I don't think that, you know, it's been 
not since 1966. And I don't think anyone watching this stream right now was born. Uh, me and you certainly weren't, even though we're old men in the YouTube game. We've not done well enough in our lifetime, I think, to have that that elite mentality. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm at a point now where if we get to more, if we get into the, if the next World Cup, if we get to another semi final or final, my expectations will start to change slightly. So I, I, I totally get that. But I just feel like Man United will do something this year a little bit. A little, be a little bit special. I wouldn't be surprised. If I you take that, up. but I want to see progression. It's going to be an interesting one. I make I make Chelsea favourites outside of Man United, Liverpool. I agree. I think fourth. I think fourth for Liverpool. If they get any major injuries, they're coming fifth. Uh, they haven't got the score. I can see Thiago's father backstage. I can see his face. He's like, mm. <laughs> I can yeah. see him man right there. Um, saying his thing, but it's going to be interesting. I, I just felt with Liverpool the whole time they they had to sign someone. They had to sign someone. They had to sign someone. They didn't. And then the news comes out today. I always love transfer news two or three weeks after the window ends because it's like, yes, they were I, like we all said they were looking at Dakar, but they had to sell Shakiri or so and so first, and they couldn't get it done quickly. So Dakar ended up getting like Leicester beat you to one of your main targets because <laughs> the owners. And just crazy today, I, I don't know why I'm revealing this on, online, but. Today, the football terrace from different partners and people like me that own it, we've pumped some additional money in so we can employ someone that should make us more money in the longer term. There's nothing that stops FSG pumping some money in front end so they could get Dakar and then taking the money back out once they sold Shakiri. Well, they, they, they could sponsor the training ground and call it they, the FSG training they're ground. Still allowed to pump, they, they could have done something to get that deal to go. It wasn't like it was 100 million quid. Do you know what I mean? They could have done something they chose not to. And they left themselves in a little bit of trouble there. But we're going to be taking some calls now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, I'm really sorry. I need to go to Holland, man. Yeah, oh, cool, like, cool. I can no, chat. I can have show by myself for five minutes, bro. I've been doing it a while. Two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> no worries, mate. You go do you go do your thing, mate. Do what you got to do. Uh, we're going to be getting Thiago's father on, Davies backstage, man like Daniel's backstage as well. Lots of people going to come on in the moment, ask their questions, come on and have their say on the terrace. Make sure you've smashed that like and that share button. Any super chat questions you've got, get them in right about now as well. Can Man United win the Prem? We're going to take questions or thoughts on Arteta. The Premier League title, all that jazz. Let's go to what people are saying here. Um, some of your comments are not really directed towards us. Expectations of England has now changed, been consistent in youth teams, and it did progress to senior level, top 10 team for sure. I agree that the expectation of England has to now start to change because of what we've done. Um, there is no doubt. And we have achieved something. Semi-final followed by a final. You can't ignore that. It's it, You could argue the World Cup semi-final was fluke. It was an easy run. And then this time around, it wasn't. We, we had some tough games to play and we, we did very, very well. Um, just unfortunate. Just unfortunate. Um, that's a funny one there. I love some of these comments. Man United have lost only one game across all competitions with McFred. Um, our best performance this season came with them. Can they be upgraded? Yes, but are but they are not as bad as people make believe is what VJ thinks. Do you know what I find really interesting about the McFred thing is, I mean, if you look at the the, the, the um, Adama Traore example that Lee gave, Traore does this every season for about five or six games where he's just unplayable. Honestly, in about four or five games time, you're going to watch him and be like, has he run out of steam? Is his battery's gone? I don't know. He does it all the time. And you remember he went for that purple patch a few years ago and like the Liverpools and cities were linked with 70, 80, 90 million pound moves. It was crazy. Uh, Lee's back with us now, but we're going to go to the calls. First on the show, we're going to get a man like Daniel on to have his say with us. We have a question as well, or a comment here that says, big up Lee and Terry. United have our top four at best with McFred. Mikel uh, was the wrong choice from the start. Only good thing he won us. Sorry, he is. He won Chelsea, sorry, Tottenham's Aussie Ardillis is the cup for Chelsea trophy. I kind of get what you're saying there. I think maybe I misread that. My dyslexia kicking in there. Um, we're going to go to your calls. Daniel's on with us first now to have his, have his say. The link is pinned to the comment section. Let's do this. Yes, Dan, how you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, man. What are you saying? How you doing? Yeah, not bad, man. What, 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 what are you here to say? What are you here to say? Um, I would say, um, just in general, with everything that you said, obviously, um, big up um, Lee Gunner, everything you do as well. Um, but I have to pull you up on it, Terry, man. You know me, I'm not afraid to pull you up on some things that you say. 
There's no way on earth you're comparing Man United and England, the England situation. There's no way on earth. Man United are in a situation that they haven't been in in a long time. They put themselves in the right situation. Look, I understand the context around it. You might feel, or actually not even you, the general consensus with a lot of Man United fans is you have the squad to do it, but you might not have the manager as opposed to Klopp. Pep and obviously Tuchel as well. Uh, me being a Chelsea fan, one of the biggest reasons why I think we can do it this year is because Tuchel um, is, I think, one of the best managers right now. And I think he's the most informed manager in the world in terms of how he's getting a tune out of his players and what he's able to do. But I'm sorry, you can't be saying after all the investment that's been made, after getting Ronaldo, look, you're the guy who says it. You say it on your channel. This is your platform at the end of the day. You've got the best left back in the league in Luke Shaw. You've got Raphael Champions League Varane. You've yep. got the best one-on-one -on -one defender in um, the Premier League in Aaron Wan-Bissaka. You've got Paul on his day. He's world-class Pogba. You've got Bruno <laughs> Fernandes. You've got Rashford. He's sometimes better than Mbappe. You've got hey! Edison Cavani. Cavani. You, you've got all this. You've got yeah. yeah. Jaden Sancho, the most creative. This is your, these are your words. Yeah, the I, most creative. I, I still don't get your point, teammate. though. My point is, you can't say that you're going to do it in the England way because it gives you room to come out. It gives you room to say, oh, we were never supposed to win. I know you're saying you're going to win it. I know okay. you're not backing out, but it gives you room to do that when you can play. So I'll England. address that. I'll address that, Dan. And I love, do you know what I love about Daniel? Come on and challenge me. This is no echo chain. Love this. This is what I want. So my connection to the England thing is just, every, I'm hearing most people say what Lee did. Ah, the manager, I still don't think you're going to do it. That's my point. That's the only England connection. I think too many people are saying it won't happen. And I just got a little feeling that it will. It will, it will go against the grain. In terms of this Man United squad, mm. it should be challenging as a bare minimum. And it is more than good enough to win this Premier League title. If we if we don't win it, you have to look at where we fin how far we finish off the top. If we finish more than six or seven points at the top, it is a disaster. And I'll say that with Chester. I'm not making excuses. We should be very close to winning it, if not winning it, because the squad is too good. We have bought different stages of their careers, three of the best players in the world this summer, to add to what was already a good squad. We lost nobody. Any Man United fan, I don't even believe in the Oli tax or the no CDM thing. That's too weak for me. With what we've got as a squad, we should still be close to Tuchel's team, Klopp's team, and Pep's team, irrespective of how they, they all do, we should be there or thereabouts. There is no get out clause for that at all. Not one, no, not one. I totally agree, man. And obviously I understand that there's a lot of callers coming on. So I'd say last, my question to Lee Gunner is, um, considering obviously with Arsenal and everything that's going on with the club, I would actually say I've seen instances of where the Arsenal team or where Arteta wants to play his style of play. We've seen performances where the team suddenly comes out and they suddenly play. I mean, I'm a Chelsea fan. The 3-0 against Chelsea last season was totally unexpected. That was supposed to be the nail in the coffin. And he gets a tune out of his players and suddenly you start to pick up a bit of form. But obviously, like with Man United, Van Gaal, there was some good performance. Even David Moyes had some good performances. How do you know or what, how do you get into the right direction? How do Arsenal get back on the right path? Who is the right manager to bring in? Because I'm hearing Antonio Conte, but I think Conte is papering over the cracks, if I'm honest. So how do you know you're on the right path, the right direction? What manager is really out there for you lot to get to trust and give a plan to, considering your situation? That's a great question. Um, I don't think it's just the manager. I've, I've said for a long time, and this is why I get a lot of stick, I think our fans need to raise the standards. You know, like we played you a couple of weeks ago. We've just been beaten by Brentford comfortably. This is after the, the um, like, so let's go back to last season very quickly, right? The soup, the whole Super League thing happened. We had 5,000 fans turn up and protest, right? Unbelievable. So we're thinking, right, this is the right time now to kick on as fans, yeah, and make some sort of stance here. The very next game, we or the yeah very very next home game we had Via Real, our manager turned it into clap for the players bus, like the team bus. There wasn't five and a half thousand people turn up to clap, so it was like well there's sixty thousand still turned up to the game, so where's the five thousand that turned up against Chelsea? Then the very next home game after that was Tottenham and there was about a hundred people there just all singing what do we think of Tottenham? Then this season we lose to Brentford, um, between and as soon as that Brentford game finished the fallout on social media with our fans was mad. Yeah, it was like everyone was on our tower. 
<clears throat> in between playing um, Brentford and playing Chelsea in the first home game, we signed Martin Odegaard and Aaron Ramsdale. Yeah, so all of a sudden that protest was is finished. Yeah, so everyone went to the game with their phones, taking selfies back at my second home and all that one, rather than protesting. And Josh was at the game. Yeah, so for me, yes, we could change manager, and I do want him changed, and I'll come to who I want in a minute. I think our fans need to really raise their standards because we moved to the stadium to compete and do what you're doing. Yeah, you've had a better 15-year plan, albeit Abramovich pumped a lot of money in at the very beginning, but you ain't pumped nothing in the last six, seven years, eight years maybe. Yeah, it's all self-sufficiency now, yeah? So I think, firstly, the fans need to raise their standards as a masses, whether you can go to games, whether you live in England or not, raise the standards. In terms of how we get back and what we can, how we can see it, get rid of Vinay, yeah? put somebody in charge of like a club legend. David O'Leary is an ambassador for Arsenal Football Club. He is Mr. Arsenal along with Tony Adams. Yes, he's probably got no commercial business sense, but he's Mr. Arsenal. I'd just give him a go. This guy's, well, what are you doing? Yeah, coming out asking for unity. Edu, technical director, bin him and go and get Mark Overmars. Yeah, another cult hero of the club. And then manager-wise, Conte probably won't ruin his reputation by coming to us. Yeah, so... I, it's hard after that because he is the best candidate, yeah, for a quick upturn, yeah, and then two years time you pass it to someone else. He ain't coming. So for me, I've said this on my channel a lot. I would take a punt on Graham Potter. The only thing with Graham Potter, yeah, <laughs> the, 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 sorry, the only thing with Graham right. Potter. No, you want to make money out of being a lookalike. That's what you want to do. <laughs> oh, come on, seriously. Yeah, like, I was actually shocked he's older than me. I can't lie, like well older than me as well. I think it's like 47. But the only thing that I worry with Graham Potter, because he has got a great style of play. If he had a proper striker last season, he probably would have got top six. Yeah, like genuinely, they would have been in that top six, I think, if he had a proper striker. Yeah, because they create, create, create. They play the wing backs, um, like Lamptey and um, I can't remember the other guy's name at the left wing back, but he's about six foot eight. Burner. Um, but... I the only thing I worry with Potter is would it be a job too big for him and he'd just be like Ollie, just happy to be in the job. So he'd do whatever the club says. But I think if you change the technical director and you change the CEO and then you get a Potter, I think that could work. The only other thing I'd say is would our fans accept a Conte? Because that guy's a serial winner. I don't think they would, mate. But I think they would accept a, a Potter. Mm, interesting. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Danny, mate, appreciate you coming on. Great questions. Thanks, great man. challenge, as always, my brother. And I'll speak to you again soon. Top, top man, indeed. Remember, viewers, we are doing another show tonight. Another, I'm, I've got to decide on the two. Maybe the viewers can help us. We're doing another legacy debate tonight uh, around nine o'clock. One of the players I'm putting into this legacy debate is going to be David Silva. I want to know who you want him to go up against in the legacy debate. So get your comments in on that one. We have a, a comment here that says, uh, Terry and Lee, um, we know Pep Guardiola is leaving City in 2023. Should England make him, uh, go, make an approach to making the England manager? What do you reckon, Lee? No. <laughs> no, I'd love it, but he won't take it anyway. Um, so no, 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 not for me. We, we had another it, one. That, yeah. we should, no, I don't think we should make an approach. I, I think I hear we, you on that. Yeah, I we had think another we one that came, different route. I hear you. We had another one that come through that says, "What's your opinion on a uh, Leroy Sane Verna swap deal?" Ooh. Not heard that rumor, but it's a question. Ooh. I do think Verna is going to leave Chelsea at the end of this season, and I do think that they will get Haaland, and it'll be a swap deal for Haaland. Yeah, I, I can see that making sense. Verna's not been great since he's been here. Harlan's going to go for about 70 odd mil, drop Werner in, and you're paying 40 mil. <laughs> like, so, yeah, I don't think Sane's going anywhere. Why would you leave Bayern Munich? Yeah, I, I, I don't see that one myself. I don't see that one myself. We go to another call now. David's here with us. Man, like David, big Chelsea fan. What are you saying, bro? Yeah, I'm good. Big up Lee as well. Come nice on. See you. <laughs> Chelsea um, are infiltrating this stream. So what's going on here? <laughs> My question to Lee is are you not worried that Arsenal have got so bad? that the manager that you require isn't going to look at you, like, seriously. Because everyone's talking about Conte. I don't think Conte is going to actually look at Arsenal and be like, why am I going to go and do this? Because I'm better than this. There's no need for me to go. So are you worried that, like, the managers you actually need are just going to 
it's kind of like now nah, i'll wait for a job or i just won't go here that's a great question i spoke about this yesterday right and i said that if you think about it he's not going to go back to chelsea anytime soon conte he ain't going man city he could wait for united but he could be waiting forever right he ain't going madrid or barcelona he ain't going by munich he won't go dortmund so where's he going he's run he's kind of run out of clubs here he ain't going to go back to juve yeah, he's just left Inter. Where is Antonio Conte going next? Yeah, so the only thing I will say is that, well, two things. That, and I agree, I don't think he will come to Arsenal because he, he has gone from seventh to first with Juve, tenth to first with Chelsea, and 20-odd points behind Juve with Inter to run away champions two years later and finishing one point behind him in his first season in the Europa League final was lost yeah, to Sevilla. So... To take Arsenal from 20th in the table to top, it'd have hero status. Yeah, literally, he would probably have a statue outside if he did that. So I think that's probably the only thing that makes me think, you know what, he might take it, you know. But I think that's more hope than anything because I don't deep down think he will. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's a good point. Legacy is so important to football players. Like we're debating legacies on in the evenings at the moment here, and it's last night he kept on going back to who is better out of Hazard and Mo Salah. It's like I'm not talking who's better, who has the best legacy, who's going to be remembered more. And if Antonio Conte was to come back to Arsenal and take you from where you are, and within two years win you a Premier League, people would that 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 could go down as the greatest Premier League title winning team. Like there, there, There's arguments there for that because it's like from where you were to what you achieved, it's like that story is so, it's legacy building. It really is. Like Leicester City, I don't think on paper, or even in the top five, top six, top seven Premier League title winners of all time. But legacy wise, their story is always going to be, always yeah, going to be remembered. So I think yeah, it's cool. Number, David, no, number one for legacy. I have, because, one, more, I have one, more, one more question. Yeah, of course. One both. more question. Um, how high are you on the Arsenal youth players? Because I'm not high on them at all. <laughs> I think Saka's all right. I think I think he has potential to be good, but I don't think he's going to be as good as everyone thinks he is. And Smith Rowe, I think, is the most confusing thing I've ever seen because <laughs> everyone's saying he's having this fantastic season and he's a shining light, but he's an attacking midfielder and you haven't scored a goal. <laughs> You've come on to kill me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know what? Saka hasn't scored a Premier League goal since February. Smith Rowe hasn't registered an assist since February. Yeah. Smith Rowe has been given number 10, which I just think is like, come on, that's Burkamp's number, man. You don't give Smith Rowe Burkamp's number, no matter how good he is. And I do rate both of them, by the way. Yeah. I'm just going to put that out there before I say what I'm going to say next. Yeah. Right. I do really rate them both. Saka's just turned 20. And I think Smith Rowe's 21. I think that that's big pressure to play for Arsenal and be the two shining like leaders, they have to drag that team forward because let's be real, Aubameyang's playing left wing back every week. Yeah, and we've got no one else. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's massive pressure. But the funny thing is, is our fans are, are kind of funny with it because our fans big up Saka to be like the greatest player in the league and he's better than Sancho, he's better than Greenwood, he's better than all these players. The fact and reality is Saka's a very, very good footballer. Very good footballer, yeah? But he shouldn't be a starting 11 week in, week out footballer for Arsenal Football Club. Yeah, he should be what Phil Foden is to Man City. But we're not in a position to do that because we're so useless squad wise that he has to play. Yeah. And then last season, the last three months of last season, he was he was awful at times, man. And that was when we were on a good run towards the end of the season and that from Christmas. He was really bad at times. You know, he came on the other night against Brentford, I think it was, did nothing. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know. I was shocked that he started against Chelsea because obviously he played in the Euros as well. Like, so it was like, give the boy a bit of breathing time. I know he scored yesterday, but 20 years old, man. And, and Smith Rowe, I like Smith Rowe, but I don't want to see him play left forward. I want to see him at number 10, which is like the number he's got on his back. But we're accommodating Martin Odegaard, who don't pass forwards a lot. He passes backwards more than forwards to play a guy who can spin, drive and run at people. So I think the problem is, is in a couple of years time, we're going to have big bids for both of them and they're just going to bounce. Yeah, but the expectation on them is unfair. Yeah, it's really unfair. And that is, it's not their fault. They're good players, but their output's not that great because they're so young and they're still learning. But who have they got to learn from? 
Do you know what I mean? Uh, good, great points there. David, legend, mate. Thanks, mate. And I'll speak to you again soon. Top man, Dave. Yeah, see you, bro. Cheers, bro. Thank you. Thiago's father's on with us next. Monsu Ahmed here says, big up Lee and Terry. If Arsenal get a new manager and get rid of, of players not needed, which area is important to get in if you can only get one of three positions? So wait, what's the most important area that Arsenal to fill player-wise? Midfield, which we didn't do enough in in the summer. It was always midfield. Um, yeah. For me, Eve Basuma should have been the number one choice. <laughs> Should have. I mean, I'm not going to play. I don't steal people's comments. Neeks has said this a few times. How do you go to Brighton with 50 million pounds and come back with Ben White? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. It's like oh, this is the you jack. Could, you the could have given them Eddie and Ketty as part exchange, or like Reese Nelson on loan or something. Do you know what I mean? You could have given right. them Arteta as a cone man, anything. Like you could have given Yeah, maybe anything. Arteta should go on loan. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, Tiago's father's here with us now. Liverpool fan. What are you saying, bro? How you doing, man? Good. When very, you said Tiago's well. father, I actually thought you meant Tiago, who plays for Liverpool's dad, is coming on. Yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking good, bro, for your age. I can't lie. <laughs> yeah, man. Lee, how you doing, man? You all right? I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Um, Just on the Arsenal thing, I've got, I've got two questions, really. But just on the Arsenal thing, you spent a lot of money in the window, and I just don't see the direction of where you're heading. What's the, like, what's the club ethos? What where do you know what I mean? It just seems a little bit almost of like a scattergun approach, and that's worrying as a fan. That's worrying when you're almost just throwing money out there just to cover voids. Like Liverpool were in that position um 10 years ago. We look at Andy Carroll coming in, 35 million pounds, Stuart Downing, 20, 20 plus million pounds, just stupid signings like that. And I just I feel Ben White 50 M's that's a massive tax. 50 M's for Ben White. Liverpool were linked with Ben White. We were we were really interested. Like we were crawling all over him. And then Ibrahim Akanate comes up at 36 million. Obviously, we go and we go and make that signing. It just makes Ben White just seem like ridiculous in terms of the money you've spent. And, and Terry, you're right. How do you go to Brighton with um with 50 M's and come back with Ben White? Um, it, it just seems a little bit crazy for me. The the direction is to championship <laughs> like genuinely like let's be real we've signed england's fifth choice goalkeeper and he is fifth choice i don't care if he was in the world in the in the euro squad he was only there because nick pope pulled out yeah. yeah yes he made it and good luck to him the same as genduzi only got there because Taliso pulled out yeah right like the, the other day but you're England's fifth choice goalkeeper. You're now a bench warmer for Arsenal, and we paid 24 million. You've been—he's basically the Harry Maguire of goalkeepers. He's been relegated three times in four years. All right, mate, chill out. He's been relegated three times in four years. Yeah, and like the thing that winds me up with it is that like I see um, David Ornstein. Like, obviously, he's very well respected within the Arsenal community. Yeah, he asked a question. Like he was, he said he got the right ump with it. Like, why are Arsenal fans criticising it? Where was Edison and Allison when they were twenty three? Edison was winning a double and got man of the match in the cup final. They won six two. At twenty three years old in yeah. Portugal, yeah. Allison was playing in goal for for Brazil with a forty one percent clean sheet record. Yeah. So it's yeah. like it's very easy to just throw that out and like, you know, I just look at it and I just think the way we've gone about our business this summer was because. They wanted to make it look like we're going down a different route after finessing us with the first route that's failed of Champions League inside three years, which is what William said, yeah, which is why he joined. And now he's cut after a year. So it's like they can't dress it up if they go and spend the money on finished articles. Or like if you look at Madison, Madison's what, 25? Basuma's 24. That's still a mm. project youth really, isn't it? They're not in their prime or anywhere near it, really. They've got another three, four years to get to prime. But yeah. the expectations go up. So for me, I've said this a lot this summer, yeah, and I'll say it again right now when there's probably about 3,000 people watching. If we keep this manager this season, yeah, and then we keep him again next season, I think we're in a relegation battle next season. I think we could potentially finish lower than 10th this season. Yeah, I don't think we'll finish above it. Next season, if we keep him, I don't think we're, we're getting above 15th. Yeah, I genuinely don't. I think a lot of players are down tools. The players that we've signed, I think, out of the one, the six that we've signed this summer, 
I think the only one who's going to live up to the hype and expectation of his price tag, yeah, is Lokonga. Yeah, he'll be the only one we can actually get profit for at the end of end of it. And and the thing that winds me up, just to finish, yeah, is like everyone's putting out this. Oh yeah, but the resale value. Why are you buying players with the vision of selling them? Surely you should be buying players with a the vision they're going to win you league titles. Yeah, it's not, oh, let's go and buy him because in three years we can sell him and make money. Like, no, let's buy him and he can help us win a league. And that's the mentality of my club, man. It's, it's done. It's finished. It yeah. ain't the club I supported when I was a kid, man. It's finished. Yeah, it's yeah I see that. I see that. And my, and my second my second thing was, um, Terry, you know, obviously, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge Liverpool fan. Obviously, got my own Liverpool channel um, with the Red Sea podcast. Um, I, I feel like Liverpool are just being written off left, right and centre. We're just, everyone's just saying, nah, Liverpool, Liverpool fourth. Nah, Liverpool only get top four if they don't get injured. Nah, Liverpool, Liverpool haven't got a chance, so on and so forth. Let's have it as it is. We finished third. Arguably Manchester United had their best season they've had in a long while. In a long, long, long while. And we were only a couple of points behind you. Um, City were outstanding. City were outstanding last year. They, they were slow to start. But I just think they were trying to find the formula. And they once they got it, they clicked into overdrive. So City were outstanding. Chelsea were were good in patches. They were good in spells. And I think the, the pressure kind of got to them a little bit of the challenging on two fronts. It was, did we put all our eggs into finishing top in the top four? Or do we just go all Champions League? And I think the Champions League run took over, and rightly so. They won a Champions League. Fantastic accomplishment for Chelsea Football Club. But Liverpool showed that we've got steel. We're gritty. We've got determination. Um, and that's and that's where I feel that this season, we could see a bit more of that. Now, I'm not sitting here thinking we're going to win the league. I, I don't have that expectation. For me, this year is about finishing respective, respectively and and keeping our, keeping our reputation intact. I'll take second. I'll take third, but I want I want trophy. I want silverware. We we now need to start cementing Jurgen Klopp's legacy by actually winning silverware. Manchester City don't let the League Cup leave their side. They win that every year, certified, guaranteed. It was the same with Arsenal. They used to win it every year, guaranteed. I, I want to I want that. I want to see doubles. You see what I'm saying? I don't I hear you. I, I've already said like I've got real big standards when it comes to like teams. When, when it comes to teams, it's not like players. You have to look at trophies they've won. And when everyone was talking about Liverpool being the, this being the greatest of a Premier League team, I, I can't buy into that. Teams that do doubles, teams that do trebles, teams that do back to backs, that's legacy building. You know, to win it one year, you, you speak to any professional footballer, going back to back is just it's so hard because it's the mental strain that 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 that, that, that comes with it. Mm. When it comes to writing Liverpool off, I view you a bit like I view Conor McGregor right now. I think he lost the edge. I think your attack is stale and I just can't as it's uh, unless you blow us all out of the water and show us that Mane is going to be back Firmino is going to start to score goals Jota is good enough to compete goal wise with the with, with the with the, the Lukaku's of this world I don't think Mo Salah by himself who's the only one who's been performing consistently for the past 18 months is going to be enough I didn't feel last year your problems were overtly because of your defenders part an issue was that your manager didn't stick with a solidified two even after the injuries. As soon as he did, you improved. But the, still the problem you had was not converting chances. You created the same amount last year as the season before. Your conversion rate had just dropped. So far this season, it doesn't look to be that much better in terms of converting opportunities. Chelsea, for instance, in my opinion, they hadn't have had the red card and it was a red card. Um, I think they beat you and they were going they were to beat you comfortably at Anfield. And you could, for me... The telltale signing that was the noise or the lack of noise coming out of Anfield that night. After 10 minutes into the game, you could Anfield hear the nervous- overrated anyway, Terry, man. I don't know why, but it's only good in the Champions you could, League. You could, hear the nervous, you could hear the nervousness in the air. So, you know, if, if your strikers click again and you get no major injuries, do I think yeah. you can win the league? Yes. But I need to, when I do my predictions, I can't break down every element of what I'm thinking. But one of the things is all our clubs are going to get injuries this season. You're more likely to get injuries than not. Your squad isn't thick enough because no genie replacement at all. No, even Shakiri, like he was still a body. Yeah. He was still a body that could come in and play. They're, they're missing. You've got kids that you're now up. Oh, the kids will come in. We all know that we can't put that kind of pressure on kids. And yeah. you know, 
Elliot started really well, looks really good. Is he going to maintain that all season at his age, at this level of intensity? I just don't think it's enough. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Liverpool. I can only speak how I think and feel. And if I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. But I, I just feel like, you know, it's, you, it's a big hole you've got to dig yourselves out of. And I just don't think FSG have given Klopp a big enough shovel. Yeah, I, I hear that. And, and, and you know what I do? And you know me, like every, I'm, I'm a very open Liverpool fan and we've had numerous chats um, about Liverpool's transfer business, where we sit at the yeah. moment. I just think that the, the one feather in our cap that everybody's forgetting is that we've got Jurgen Klopp. Yeah, he is a phenomenal, phenomenal manager. We look at his we look at his finishes with Dortmund. On average, when he when he won a title with Dortmund, he used fourteen players. Same with same with um with with Liverpool. On average, we used about fourteen players. I see a lot of Chelsea fans in the comments um saying that a whole season with Tuchel. I rate Thomas Tuchel again. Historically, look back at my tweets when you when you had Lampard. I said by December, stroke January, Lampard would be gone. Thomas Tuchel comes in. Chelsea are a different team. But again, let's have it as it is, Chelsea fans. Um, you know, there's there's the master and there's the apprentice. Jurgen Klopp is the master. He's still there. Yeah. You can't be writing Jurgen Klopp off. Phenomenal, phenomenal man manager. Knows how to galvanize a team, knows how to create create what uh, a young Jose Mourinho used to do, which was a siege mentality. In recent years, Jose's siege mentality became very poisonous. Whereas Klopp creates a siege mentality and he creates that underdog mentality, which allows the team to perform at the level which they need to perform. I agree with you, Mane yeah. needs to start firing, but I still think we've got enough to, to keep us up there. I hear you, bro. Listen, great call as ever, mate. Thanks for coming on and giving us your say. Yeah, really man. appreciate it, my bro. Top, top Thanks man. Lee, no take worries. Care, mate. Take care, man. Peace. Thank you very much, Ian D. We've got a few more Super Chats before the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to get more of you on. It's just very, very difficult to do it. So many things going on here. We have a super chat that says, what do you think of what Edu said? <laughs> go and watch my video, mate. <laughs> yeah, go check out. By the way, yeah, the, that video out, mate. links yeah, in the like, title. Go check out and subscribe to League Gunners channel. Yeah. There we go. Arsenal get away with so many lies. Two seasons they told fans no players will go into last years of their contracts and it's still happening no one yeah. questions this mate he's we've just rejected a bid for Mohamed El Neni the Turkish market shuts tomorrow yeah he's in the last year of his contract why are you rejecting bids and he's not even any good given a, an academy <laughs> player will produce just as much as him he's not any good I remember when when Man United got rid of Alexis Sanchez and he was crap for us and everyone said oh who's going to replace him five goals in 18 months like One honestly, of them was I, against us, <laughs> mate, and it's like I, I would back, I would back any of our young strikers to do to score more than five goals in eighteen months. So he's easy to replace. Monso here says we ain't winning the league this season. He's a Liverpool fan, of course. Last season and versus Chelsea, our, our attack was too stale and poor. We need players to rejuvenate, and we haven't. FSG out is what Monso Ooh. Ahmed says. Ooh. Yeah, not a fan. Um, this guy is just another fan. Liverpool not winning the league, no depth. Chelsea for the Prem. Uh, listen, it's funny, everyone, it's, it's funny seeing Chelsea fans so yeah. dirty now. When like literally, maybe eight months ago, they were like Lampard. Oh no, we got to keep him. We got to give him time, mate. It's a process. Yeah, and yeah. now Tuchel comes in and shows you. And this is why I get the ump because get rid of the manager, you can go and win. Yeah, and Chelsea yeah. approved that. I hear you on that. But ladies and gentlemen, make sure you go subscribe to Lee's channel. The link is in the title. Same time next week, Lee. Yeah, come on. We're back on again. This this show, uh, Straight Facts, is going to be there. Also got another top quality YouTuber joining uh, joining me for a one-on-one -on -one show starting very, very soon. Man like Grizz Khan uh, oh, Grizz in the house is going to be on the terrace. So we've got a few more of these on the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we level up over the season. Blaze here says, why couldn't the master beat a 10-man 10-man apprentice side because Klopp won you the title. Don't make him the best in the world. Please eat your humble pie is what Blaze has got to say. We've created a Chelsea. Every show ends up being Chelsea versus Liverpool. I do at the minute. It's, it's a madness. That's it's a madness. Chelsea have got so, like, mouthy because they won the Champions League, and rightly so, because if it was me, I, uh, you'd never hear the end of it, mate. Like, if we win the... They, they've won it twice, yeah, like, before we've ever won one. Yeah, but honestly, yeah, I'd never shut up. But Chelsea fans have got so larry with it. Then they've signed Lukaku. They've had a wicked transfer window. Saul Neguez, Lukaku, they've got rid of some fringe players for good money. Yeah, and 
like it must be great being a Chelsea fan. And then Liverpool, it's kind of funny seeing Liverpool fans saying, oh, we can't win the league FSG out because it was when they won the league and the Champions League, it was, oh, look at our net spend and like, oh, look at what we're doing. Great. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how football works, isn't it? It's just like, it's mad. A uh, comment here says, where are the Arsenal fans who had a go at Lee? Um, they're not here. I don't know what to say other than that. Like, it, listen, it, it's the link was put out there. Um, it's all good. You should have been in the space the other night. All happened on the space the other night. It's all grand. It's all oh, gravy. The space was lit. I was on it for five and a half hours. Wow. Honestly, Wait, I, said, I, I didn't know what it was about. The guy who runs the, who run the space, yeah. And I text yeah, him. I said, "We're going to do a space." Yeah. I said, "You're going to do a space," and um, because obviously that was the day the Edu news drop. I said, "I'll jump on. I've got a bit of free time." I said, I need to edit a vlog. I need to go live. I said, but I can give you an hour. Yeah. After about four hours, I'm like, boy, man's popping everyone in, bro. It was like, I'm just firefighting left, right, and center. It was bad. I hear but you. I hear you on that. It and, and it was good to like hear you guys kind of have the conversations and talk things through and stuff like that. And like, obviously, you spoke with Kesh and, you know, like Kesh is the, the crazy thing for me is about all these conversations is where people come to me and they're like, Terry, like, one of your guys from the terrace has said something. It's like they're, they're, they come on the show. They're panelists. They're important to my channel, but I'm not their, da their dad. Equally, people come to me that league. Oh, Lee tweeted something, Terry. I'm not happy with it. Oh, what did he say? I oh, called, <laughs> called somebody a wanker. And I'm like, I'm not Lee's dad. What am I meant to do? Like, Lee's a grown man. You, Terry. But you are. I know. <laughs> bro, it's literally, I know. It's a crazy one. It's like, I don't control anybody. Um, Igal is backstage. Igal has come on. Come get him on, man. Get him on. Igal's here to have his day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Go. Igao is here. What are you saying, brother? Chilling. Uh, look, everyone who's expecting us to have a shouting match, it's not that. We've had a conversation last time. We've spoke about it. And let me just make it clear. I don't feel like anything I said in the situation when it comes to football was wrong. Going overboard and when it got personal, that's when that's when football debate ended. But if you go back to the uh, debate, you can clearly see that my stance was, I'll give it time until I see that it's untenable with Arteta. And you said to me, if... If and when you are a tata out, I'm going to cook you. And I get that. <laughs> I completely get that. I completely get that. But at the end of the day, I am not going to be, I'm not going to be one of those people that what Terry was talking about that are going to be like, oh, I'm not, I'm going to stick to my agenda just because I got into an argument with Lee over it. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, to me, it's about what's best for the well, club. You could have quite easily hidden for the last couple of weeks. I can't lie. Yeah. You never hide. Yeah. I'm always here. Exactly. I saw, I see the show yesterday as well, man. Same went mad. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm you know still what? waiting for the apology, by the way. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we had this conversation, man. I don't feel like I owe anybody an apology because listen, at the end of the day, that particular that night, what wound me up was that I was doing my watch along. And I said this on the space the other night. Yeah. For everyone who didn't hear the space, I'll say it one more time, right? I was doing my watch along. Terry used to always send me the link, yeah. Even though he knew I weren't coming on because I was doing player ratings, he'd always send me the link. Yeah. So I'd go on Chick's channel and do the link. Um, so I do the player ratings. So I can't remember whether I text you or whatever, but then Chick's whole comment section was getting filled up with, oh, there's these people slagging you off and rah, rah, rah. But this was going on for like an hour. I was like, oh my God. So like, I was like, Terry, send me the link. Yeah. Or, um, or I'm jumping in or whatever. Yeah. So the first thing I said was like, like we've, I think we're just beating Dundalk. It was like, why is everyone concerned what I'm saying? And that's the one thing that I've, I've always said. It's like, why does anyone care what I've got to say? Like To me, like, I do YouTube full time, right? But I'm still baffed as to why people listen to me. Yeah, it's like, I'm literally pinching myself every day. Like, why do so many people care what I've got to say? Like, like good or bad? Yeah. Like, it, it just, yeah it, let me ask you this though. Let me ask you this, though. Do you feel like there's anything wrong with people who wanted to back the manager, especially after winning the FA Cup and the way we were playing football up until that FA Cup win? Don't I can't lie. It was it was we played well with the back three. We got found out coming into the new season and near the end of the season, I still had hope that we could win the Europa League. Once we didn't win the Europa League, I feel like a lot of people turned and that's when Arteta out was like the main thing. And throughout the summer, we knew he wasn't going to get sacked. So I was willing to give him the first couple of games. And after the first couple of games, I just feel like he has not adapted. He has not changed. Nothing's changed. We haven't gotten better at all. And I don't see how we're going to get better now that the transfer window's shut and we haven't improved the squad to a level where... It's 27 over. months, mate, until it took four years that Klopp took. Come on, back the process. <laughs> you, know what, you know what I would say, though, boys, what ends up happening? And I know this because I did this in my early years. 
and people still accuse me of it now and they don't talk. No one speaks privately. Everybody just puts everything out there publicly and it becomes a cesspit in many ways. Lee's got his opinions and Lee knows because we speak privately. I don't agree. I haven't agreed with all of his opinions at times. I remember reading him saying, why don't you just give the guy a chance? So no, I don't you think he's right. Me, oh, you was out of order saying this or like you shouldn't. Have yeah, said I'll challenge these things. But the point is, is, is that, time, but I don't judge Lee's personality in person and him as a man based on his football opinion. And that happens too often on social. Someone will say, to, when I was new to this, it'd be like, Terry, I think you're talking absolute bullshit about blah, 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 blah. I used to think, why are you like, talking about me and get angry? It's like, they're not having a go at me as the person. They're talking about my, my opinion on that specific thing. But the, but the thing that winds me up, I think, Terry, I think right? with you two, I think with you two, like you both started going personal with each other and it ended up going away from the actual subject matter. And it was like, yeah. It was actually a really good football debate, and then it became personal. Do you know what it was? For me, it was like I went into everything blind, yeah, because I'm on a watch along. We've just beaten Dundalk, yeah. I think um, Balogun had scored his first goal that night, yeah. And it was like, you know, I'm just sitting there. I'd flown back to England, yeah, to do a week in, in Wolves with my birds. We were in a hotel, yeah. Like, and funny enough, the hotel we was in, yeah, Chelsea uh, played Wolves the following week, and we we're in the same hotel, yeah. It was like, it was mad. Right, but I flown back there and I was like, my missus is sat there waiting for me to finish a watch along and play a rating so then we can chill. Yeah. Chill. And then all of a sudden it's like boom, 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 comment, 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 comment. And I know the comment section wind th things up all the time. Yeah, they do it all the time. Oh, he said this about you. Go and check his and you go and check it. You're like, he never said nothing, mate. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was just like everyone was doing it. So it's like I've then come into it and I'm like, I popped up and there's like four or five people there, and I'm just like, right, that's it. Yeah, sleeves up, let's go. Yeah, and it is what it is. At the end of the day, yeah, I, I, I will never, ever stop holding this football club accountable. Yeah, until they do what they smashed that stadium down for and they told me in 2002 they were moving to that ground for. Peter Hillwood is dead now, bless him. Yeah, but he stood there and he addressed the nation and said, we've got Barclays funding, yeah, and secured the bank loan to build Ashburton Grove. That was 19 years ago. Yeah, and then off of the back of that, we're going to compete with the best teams in the world. We're going to compete. Then did see this when and done it. I am going to hold them accountable. And if people think that's negative, sorry, I'm a winner. I've grown up on five league titles at this club, man. I've seen this win five titles. Let me ask you this though quickly. Um, do you feel like there's a problem with fans who gave uh, who were giving Arteta time and maybe even still giving him time, knowing that he's in the job? Because I know a lot of people who still are saying, you know what, as long as he's in the job, they're going to back him. I'm no longer in that boat. I'm I'm just saying he's no, it's no longer tenable to keep him. But even myself, did you ha do you still feel like I was wrong to do that? Because I feel like I did nothing wrong. I as think, no, 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 no. I, I get that. And I understand that, like, m for me personally, right, I've seen the like, and I'll come to that in one second. Yeah, Aaron Ramsdale, we bid twenty million pound for him, rejected. Nobody on social media was wanting Aaron Ramsdale. Soon as we then get a twenty-four million pound bid accepted, all of a sudden, Ornstein's out there, everyone's out there. Oh, look at David Seaman's journey to Arsenal. Oh, where was Edison and Allison? And it was like, now he's getting the shirt on. We're backing him. Okay, well, if if Ryan Shawcross is on a free transfer, yeah, and he puts the shirt on, and we sign him, is everyone backing him? No. So let's just put that in the bin. If Deli Ali signs for Arsenal, are we all backing him? No. So for me, I'd, it's, it's admirable that people will back the manager or the, the players. But what I just found so funny with the whole thing was the way everyone just got sucked into trust the process. Because the process is run by an owner that literally nobody likes. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, why are you trusting this? Because you're basically trusting the owner. Yeah. Because you have to have a level of hope because as a fan, you want your team to do well. You want your team to succeed. You want you want to see something at the end of the tunnel as no, a fan. I, if you can see that it's wrong, I get it. But if other people don't see it in, in, in the same way you do, now, and you see things differently, you have, that's their opinion. I think it is your opinion. I do have to, have to come to the end of the show now just due to personal things. <laughs> but I would say this. I don't think there's an issue with either camp. It's how you treat and talk about one another. Yeah. Like I, I make comments where I say things like, I think people that abuse Marcus Rashford, I don't feel like they're real Man United fans. And I, But I stand by that. But what I'm not doing is going after one individual and saying, Joe Bloggs is a scumbag. A, I'll give you an this, example. That, the other. And that's what I think. I'm not saying you did that, Gal. I'm giving you an example. No, no, I'll give an example. There's, there's a rat on my screen for a rather reason, than the opinions. 
Yeah. If you don't back Arteta, you're a rat. Yeah. Yeah. And anyone who, and I remember putting a tweet out there the day he officially signed as Arsenal manager. And I'm gutted because I deleted it by mistake. I wanted to delete the one above it. Yeah. And I deleted that because that had about a thousand comments on it. Yeah. And I was going to retweet it and just reply to all of them now. Yeah. Because the abuse I got on that particular tweet, and this is where I'm at. Yeah. And where I was at. Yeah. I didn't want him. I put the tweet out saying, I can't back sign because I don't believe in. Yeah. And everyone just went, oh, you're a fake fan. Go down the lane, which I find hilarious. But go down the lane because I want to win titles. Like, you lot are backing a guy who's never managed. Why don't you go down the lane? Because they don't win nothing. Like, And it's like, now I just look at it and I think like it's the same with players. You have to back the player because he signs for us. No, I don't back mediocrity. I want to win. But the problem is I don't actively sit there and individually target people, yeah, for doing that. Now I do, because I'm sick and tired of people taking the mick and, and calling me out and having a pop and, like, siege mentality, piling it on on social media, trolling every day. So now I actively call people out. But when, it, when he first got the job, it was, I ain't backing him. I'm not having him, yeah? I don't care what he does. It will never be any good, and he'll ruin the club. And it was... It's kind of funny because now seeing all of the people that abused me now I'm uh, that had unfollowed me, blocked me, loads of slid in the DMs, yeah, that I haven't spoken to for years, loads of following me, they're suddenly popping back up in the chat. Yeah, I was done with you lot when you when you all jogged on. Because at the end of the day, none of you come to me and said, Joel, and, and even one of my mates, Ryan, big up to Ryan, yeah, he was a staunch Venger out. Yeah. Every time we won a football match under Arteta. Yeah, including when we beat Tottenham last season. Oh, you trust in the process yet, Gunner? Yeah, so after the three games this season, I was like, you still trust in the process, Ryan? And it's like, yeah, but who else can we get? Do you back the, do you trust the board? And this is a funny one. I know you want to wrap up, Terry, yeah? Do you trust this board to go and do what's required to get a proper manager? Or you've been trusting it for 20 months, mate, under a process. <laughs> yeah? So come on, you can't have your, your cake and eat it, like... No. And, 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 I, and I agree with that because as, as people are self say to me, that's like, everyone knows my thoughts on Oli, even it, like, but my, my targets always the glazers good, bad or indifferent. I'm like, yeah, I still don't trust those pagans and you need to be consistent. But gents, listen, it's good seeing you boys chat uh, with some Come civility on. and respect and, and everything else. It's good. That it's all being cleared, all being aired and done like that. Everyone who's tuned in an hour and 42 minutes uh, for the first show is mad. It will definitely be shorter next week. No doubt. Uh, viewers, <laughs> make sure that like button has been smashed. Make sure you're subscribed um thank you to all the super chats all the new subscribers today lee's got some poor over 120 new subscribers to the football territory in this stream i'm going live in 37 minutes as well so go check out lee gunner's stream the link for his ch uh, channel is in the, the title of this just click on it go and subscribe over there but until next time take care goodbye god bless and we'll see you all again very very soon